This week, we're talking about friends don't let friends have no core. <laughs> you gotta use the abs. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Good, Good for you. you. Good for you, man. Good for you. Good for you. Good for you. The podcast about the things we go to, the purchases that haunt us, and best products, services, and industry happenings in the wellness, well being, and spiritual space. We're going to give you a healthy little dose of fun. We're going to talk about the things that are happening in pop culture, the ones that got away, the things in our cart that are haunting us or ghosting us, our strong opinions that are loosely held. <laughs> We like to call this the Grex. The group text. The group text in your ear. So come say hello. Join us in the audio Grex. Where friends don't let friends get, get scammed. Okay, we have a drink. I was really so excited about this drink that I forgot I forgot it in the refrigerator last week because I didn't want it to be even a little bit not cold. Ooh. I didn't want it to be tepid. I wanted it to be icy and refreshing. Nothing can be tepid in this no, world. Hot only. Spicy. Hot or ice. No yeah. in between. No nuance. <laughs> no nuance. That's what we're about on this pod. If you Just kidding. <laughs> okay, so wait. Based off the bottle design, what do you think this is? Tropical. Tropical. Okay. Yeah. Any particular flavor you're thinking of? I just hope it's not pineapple. <laughs> it's not pineapple. Okay. I feel like my association with the shape of the bottle is pineapple. <laughs> Does it taste like pineapple? No, it tastes like ginger or something. Huh. No. I'm telling you, I have a sophisticated palate. <laughs> <laughs> and I, <laughs> I promise. What, 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 do you, what do you get? It kind of tastes like flavored coconut water. Okay. But I don't know what flavor. Interesting. Okay. Oh, it's not what I wanted it to be. Oh, yeah. It's not very good. Oh, it's horrible. It's pretty bad. Oh, it's horrible. I need like a Diet Coke. <laughs> oh, that sounds good. <laughs> or real coconut water. Like coconut water sounds amazing. Harmless Harvest sponsor us. Mm, seriously. We love you. Okay. You, you got to unveil it. You're going to be shocked. Okay. Truly shocked. I'd never seen this before. Ew. <laughs> Oh, cinnamon. Cacao water. The <laughs> fuck? <laughs> I know. Fuck? Can you believe that that's a water? The chocolate industry wastes 70% of the cacao. I understand why. It tastes horrible. Whole cacao consumption. Shell, fruit, and beans is good for you. Good for you? Good for you? Good, good for, for who? You. Good for you, man. Good for you. Good for you. Hey, Michelle. Hey, Wallace. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Welcome to Good For You, this show where we talk about the things we ghosted, the purchases that haunt us, and it's really just cosmic consumerism gone rogue. Rogue. <laughs> <laughs> where friends don't let friends get Scam. scammed. Hopefully. Yeah. What's uh? What's on your grape list? <laughs> we both walked into the studio and we were like, man, that list of grapes. <laughs> fucking eclipse. <laughs> this day's been going fine except for all these horrible things. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe I just looked at the eclipse too long. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> uh, I got the Channing Nicholas warning too late. Honestly, though, that was just... It was pretty beautiful. It was nice and orange. It was gorgeous. <laughs> the eclipse was worth it. Curse yeah. me forever. Whatever. Gorgeous to see the planets just doing their thing. I'm already cursed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Born this way. <laughs> my my gripe of the week is I keep seeing... I should add, I've seen three people in the past month do this, which feels like a tipping point. Okay. Okay. Continue. <laughs> of people walking and reading at the same time. In public? Yes. <laughs> Not like on a treadmill at a, at a gym. Like no, walking down the street. slightly more acceptable. <laughs> at the gym, though, people are usually walking or running too quickly for them to really be able to read. If you can walk while reading, you should do it at your house. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> How dare you do it in public? <laughs> shame. 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 <laughs> I've seen three different people doing it. I've seen one woman doing it around the Silver Lake Reservoir what? three times. Okay, girlfriend, <laughs> you're supposed to get out and walk and see the thing. You're supposed to stare through that lovely high fence. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
<laughs> and gaze upon the draining water. Also, you got to look where you're stepping there because the whole thing's uneven. Also, there's dog shit everywhere. That's true. Like, there's a lot of people. Look alive. Heavily trafficked reservoir. Extremely. So, and- if you're out there and you love to read and walk at the same time, let us know. I want to know your words per minute. <laughs> yeah. Well, I walk on my little under desk treadmill and I read. That's in the different because your book is still stationary, mm-hmm. essentially, or you're right. reading material. Right. I will right? say, yeah, totally. I saw I was in the airport and I was walking through security, and there was a guy reading while we were walking through security. That's a little different. Like, Stop is and it? start. Is it? Because I was like, mm. Look oh. alive out there, buddy. Come on. Take your shoes off. Take your hat off. Take your jacket. Is this the first time you've ever fucking traveled? Like, unpack your shit. What's going on? It took him forever. Oh, yeah. Because he's reading. It's only acceptable if he has his shit together. He did not. He should be in TSA pre-check. If he was reading. also reading. Let's judge him for it. <laughs> you know he was reading? Such a fun age. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I read that book. Yeah, me too. And I was like, you know, I read that book. It wasn't worth reading, standing, walking. No, <laughs> like, it's not. It's not that that compelling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so yeah. it kind of felt like a pickup. Do you know what I mean? Uh, what we've talked about in the past, being seen with a book. So he's trying to pick up people in the security I line. Think, I think that's I think psycho. That, honestly, I think that's it. Because okay. listen to an audio book. If you really are so engrossed in a story, audio books can be real hit or miss, though. I think they're, they're not horrible. a one to one situation. I would say they're. I would rather read than listen to an audio book. Actually, I just read a New York Times article about audio book narration and how it's like. Very difficult to na- to narrate an audiobook because you can't be too animated, but oh. you can't be too boring. And I, that's my gripe most of the time. I prefer that the author reads their book because mm-hmm. they better. read it how it's intended. Otherwise, I can't sure. really listen to one. I kind of zone it out. Like, if yeah. I, even though I want to focus, it's like, and I wonder if it's an ADHD thing. But I'm just like, why isn't this a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, I'm yeah. like, I need some intonation. I yeah. need some like bing, bang, boom, you know, zip, zap, zap. I need a better break than a chapter break. Yeah, like you need a co-host. <laughs> Where's the music transition? <laughs> Where are the ads? Yeah. <laughs> that I want to skip through. <laughs> yeah. I need something to keep me active so I can fast forward 15 mm-hmm. seconds. Well, no audiobooks for us. No reading and walking. Also, please, if we ever have ads, don't skip through them. <laughs> because skip through we, them, but then maybe maybe help us. We really like the stuff we put out. We do, actually. You know that. Speaking of which. <laughs> what do you mean if I don't have a printer, what do I do? Come on, Dan, he'll be straight with me. I, <laughs> I don't own a printer. Because Nobody my age owns a printer. Because you don't print anything out? So we're going to announce this week's giveaway at the end of the episode. It's really good. <laughs> we didn't have a winner last week. Because we didn't announce a... We didn't do a prize. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Here's the thing. You also can review the podcast. <laughs> Even if we don't have a prize, we would, we would love you so much for it. That would be so kind. That would be so kind. In fact, if you do that, we will shout you out. We totally will. <laughs> we'll, we'll shout you out. Like, if you leave your email, we'll send you a personal email. We might even send you a surprise gift. We Like, we might. Actually, we have a lot of stuff. We've been wanting to do that. Like, <laughs> yeah. we are the type of people that do that. So. All my friends listening, you know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> I, we will send you something. <laughs> from it. Because I know you haven't reviewed it. <laughs> <laughs> no, kidding, kidding, kidding. Anyways, let's get into good for who? Humpst. 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 Okay, this week we're talking about name core. Not cottage core. Not clown core. <laughs> not dino core. Not fuzzy core. Not weirdo core. Bloke core. Ballet core. Norm core. <laughs> Norm core. <laughs> we're talking about name core, the internet's insatiable appetite for naming things, especially thanks to, honestly, TikTok and the accelerated pace at which trends come across our airwaves and our brainscapes and we're introduced to them we fall in love with them and then we fall out of love with them and also trend forecasters people at podcasts <laughs> look at them nerds <laughs> you think they know something <laughs> they, think they, they think they know so much just because they're on an algorithm <laughs> Don't name any names. <laughs> I don't want to call anyone out. <laughs> I don't really think we were calling things like core. No. Until, until maybe within the past year. It's really easy to give something a name that doesn't necessarily like a niche idea or a niche trend. Like all of a sudden this own its own category when in reality like ballet core is just like wearing ballet flats. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> Athleisure core. Yeah. <laughs> it's called 
America. <laughs> <laughs> if I had a core, it would be Amish streetwear core. Yes. <laughs> so good. That's my vibe. <laughs> I don't know. I My core is... A24 core. <laughs> yeah. Except for I've proudly only bought one piece of swag from them. <laughs> What's on Lane Ceramics core? Oh, yeah. What else is there? Cyber Y2K? There's so much. You can even go to Aesthetics Wiki and just like go catch up on all the different cores that exist. That site is it very exists. confusing. It's I was trying to navigate it and I was like, horrifying. <laughs> so confused. <laughs> it also makes you feel really old. Yes. <laughs> really fast and really not cool. Well, we also had that girl aesthetic, which we've talked about, Night Luke's aesthetic Mm -hmm, coming in, mm -hmm. and girl bossing going out. Mm -hmm. And that coincided with that girl aesthetic. And if you don't know what that means, because I didn't know what that girl was until a few weeks ago, until we started to talk about Night Luke's aesthetic, it's that idealized kind of hyper wellness, hyper productive kind of bland aesthetic it's very minimal it's kind of like influencer girl it's also adjacent to clean girl aesthetic oh right (laughs) (laughs) which is like you wash your face you're on your shit you're that girl you're shiny you're that girl (laughs) you have to be glistening yeah you're a glazed Glazed donut donut, you wear bike shorts you maybe have a bland personality like Hailey bieber but you're that girl, man. You're like on your shit. And I don't know. I think of like zooming out from all the naming, all these subcultures, basically like giving something a name cre- makes it real, right? Mm. Like there's some philosopher that says that. Like once we can name something, like mm-hmm. we can experience it and externalize and it. Exactly. If we don't have a name for the color blue, then we like literally can't see the color blue. It's Mm -hmm. only when we can identify something that it becomes real to us and we can experience it. And I think it's kind of the same thing with trends, but also like identities. Mm -hmm. These are kind of giving a name to anything and everything, especially these micro trends that are just flashing past us on Instagram and TikTok. It helps us identify elements of ourselves that we want to own even for a second. I'm Mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, I'm dressing. I'm, I'm being like clean girl. I'm being that girl right now. I'm going to like embody that girl aesthetic. I mean, so triple air sign right now. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) No, but truly, I think even we talk about meaning making systems a lot and astrology is one of the great ones. But even with our understanding of trends and archetypes and personas, and even if you think about the main character energy Mm -hmm. trend that was happening a few years ago, I don't even know how long ago Probably a year ago. It wasn't even that long. Oh, okay. A few years ago. (laughs) Back back a dog's age ago. In the early (laughs) aughts. I feel like now everyone (laughs) is just like, you know, in the early aughts, everything happened then. No, it was in 2020. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But I think that's part of it, too, is being able to really just make meaning out of something by labeling it and immediately be able to signal to somebody else like, hey, I'm into the same things that you're into, like niche, tiny, like the Internet is wonderful and horrifying because it can connect us to people who are have the same like micro interests that we have Mm -hmm. like such specific niches that Mm -hmm. we're into and so when you think you're alone in the world you're like wait there's actually 30 other people who are into um like deep frying boogers amazing you know like wow i'm not alone anymore now we're deep fried booger core you know that's our thing (laughs) and then you're in the in group the in group for the booger core (laughs) i wouldn't wish that upon my worst enemy unless of course we're talking about my enemy Gwyneth Paltrow. Fuck you, Gwyneth Paltrow. You know what you did. Everyone wants to feel like they're in the in-group they want to be in. Exactly. Yes. They're in the group that they're like in the center of the group they want to be part Mm -hmm. of. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think especially as we are more isolated, pandemic related for sure, but even prior to that, people are looking for groups where they feel like they belong, they feel understood, they feel seen and heard. And sometimes that is communicated through how you look. And it's just the extension of expressing your association with a group and their values and their sets of belief. And that's changing all the time. You know, like think about how many kids go goth when they're in high school, (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) you know, and then grow out of that phase. Sometimes, sometimes not. Someone might be goth right now. You know, it was was never just a phase, mom. So maybe you're still emo. I don't (laughs) No, but that idea of like finding and trying on an identity, especially trying on a label for a second and then being able to like flip to the next one, I think is like very of our time. Mm -hmm. And I can see the pluses and minuses of both, right? Like you might just be attracted to a specific core or label Mm -hmm. because that's like what you think cool people are doing. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't truly like 
mm, resonate with your soul and your real yeah. identity, right? You're like online ceramic shirts are really ugly for the most part. But Wallace is wearing them. <laughs> <laughs> So I will <laughs> wear one. <laughs> but I think it's supposed to be intentionally bad, right? <laughs> yeah, yes. So on the one hand, we have the people who are like, oh, my God, being myself, I, there's like a label for that. Like, oh, my God, clown yeah. core, being obsessed with clown makeup. That's a thing. Incredible. And on the other hand, there's the people who are like, oh, OK, what's the newest trend hashtag with core mm. in it? OK, I'm going to do that because that's what's cool. And sort of that perpetuating the fast fashion and mm. sort of like the trend cycle, accelerated trend cycle that we're seeing, which I think causes a lot of like anxiety and stress. Yeah. And it's propelled forward by that the like equal opposition to whatever is trending. Mm -hmm. So it's like that girl aesthetic, girl boss, whatever, mm -hmm. that extreme productivity mode. I We've talked about this before on the podcast, but like goblin mode and goblin girl is a reaction to a lot of that. Yeah. It's like kind of a little bit nihilistic fuck you to the overworking girl boss archetype. But I do feel like goblin girl is in my soul. Yes, for sure. <laughs> what does goblin girl want? Yeah. So you see these articles on, I don't know. I can't remember which site. I feel like it was, it was I don't want to say Harper's Bazaar because they have better writing than this, but <laughs> it was like, it's okay, guys, to be a goblin girl. And it's like, yeah. Yeah, we're aware. <laughs> we good. But I think that's part of it is this idea that, oh, it's okay for me to let loose if I call it this. Mm -hmm. Because then I'm identifying. It's it's just showing our inner misogyny. Oh, I can't be a regular girl that farts. I have to be in goblin mode. <laughs> yeah, for any of this to be acceptable. <laughs> so it's just this I interesting. Hear that. I hear that. But at the same time, I'm also like, sometimes I just tell Ethan, like, yeah. I need to goblin girl tonight. Yes. So I need you to cancel the plans. Yeah. He understands it. He's like, got that. Got it's like shorthand. a shorthand. Yeah. Yes. Also, there's the whole argument mm. that just like, even by calling things name core, we're destroying name core. It's like the, the game's over. This person who wrote this article that we're referencing, it's called Namecore, is the trend that unifies all trends. It's on theface.com. It's by Olive Pomitsi. This person, okay, I like their name, <laughs> Olive. Very cool. Yeah, great name. They admit at the end of the article that, you know, by giving this a name, it's already passe. It's mm -hmm. already dead. Mm -hmm. And I think to their point it's really, I feel, more emblematic of the news cycle and the media and content cycle that we're kind of at the whims of here mm -hmm. because this isn't new. Like, none of these trends are necessarily new. We just know about people engaging in them more quickly. And I think it's more if, of a comment on this insane content cycle that we're all kind of living on. Yeah, and almost like the knowingness of like, yeah, once you call something out, once it becomes mainstream, it's no yeah. longer cool anymore. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, now that we all are like, oh, there's a core for everything. It's yeah. Like, well, that's not cool. Yeah. Like it was about following, you know, it was about <laughs> keeping up with it. Now it's going to be about nothingness. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Existential core. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, it's already happening. Okay, so. Or is it? Who is name core good for? Good for who? I guess I wanted actually a little bit more from this article. Sorry. That's where I was going. I agree. It, it wasn't satiating for me because I think I wanted a little bit more of like a cultural study yeah. perspective. I agree. And so I feel like actually Namecore, I'm not co-signing the name, but I do think that being aware of the cycle of these things is helpful and interesting to observe because you can observe culture and it acts like a mirror. Yeah. And to be more aware of it is great for everyone. Question it. Yeah. Question culture, man. Yeah. You know? Change your core out whenever you want. <laughs> yeah. Be whatever core you want to be. So I think it's good for everyone. How about you? Yeah. I think name core is good for everyone and it's also horrible for everyone. Mm. <laughs> the, yeah. For both, you know, the both planet. sides of the... Yeah, exactly. But like for the extremes, right? Like I think it can be liberating and, and amazing to be like, yeah, this is who I am and there's like a name for it or there's a way to call it or there's a yeah. way I identify, right? We know how important it is for people to feel like they can identify with descriptions of themselves, right? Mm -hmm. That feel true. And also, I think if we're always chasing after, we don't truly know who we are and we don't feel self-actualized, then we'll chase after identities or labels and try them on continuously in mm -hmm. order to try and see which one we fit into. Mm -hmm. And I think it could, it should be the opposite. You know, it should be like you exist and then you can be like, oh, this is who I am. 
and, mm. and name it versus let me try a bunch of costumes on and see which one is most me. I feel like you could do both though. It's fun to try stuff on and be like, does this work? Yeah. And sometimes I feel like that's yeah. what being young is, right? Like mm. that's what your 20s or my 20s, I'll speak from the eye, we're all about. Just be like, am I a slut? <laughs> Let me try that on. <laughs> try and then after your 20s, you're, like, Maybe, you're yeah. dead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You die and no more fun for you. <laughs> you're just, oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're not. You're fun. You're more fun in your 30s. Honestly, more down to get naked. 30s a new 40. <laughs> <laughs> no, 30s a new 20. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> okay, name core is neutral. It's really neutral. Yeah, the most neutral thing it's good for we've encountered. <laughs> yeah, good it almost doesn't exist. That's almost like it's fake. <laughs> <laughs> Nude Mints. What's up, Nude Mints? <laughs> Nude Mints is a sponsor today on the pod. Have you tried them? Yeah, they explode in your mouth. I liked it. It was quite an experience for me. I loved it. It was very refreshing. Yeah. and A wave of flavor. They're really cute. They come in these really cute pa- packages and all different flavors. And dear listener, you can get 10% off by going to itsjustnude.com. They're really cute. You'll see they come in these fun packages and you can get 10% off using code HOLISTICISM. They were one of our sponsors for our amazing Quantum Con event we had in April. So shout out to Nude. We love them and we love their mints. You should check them out. You're probably going to start seeing them everywhere because they're cool. But you should get on it ASAP. You can get a lot of mints for a little money. <laughs> <laughs> they're really good. They're delicious. Also, like yeah. you always have bad breath in your mask if yeah. you're still wearing a mask. If you're not yeah. wearing a mask, even more reason to be popping mints in your mouth because now everyone else has to smell your breath you know exactly so these are really good and i like that they come in mint flavors but also fruity flavors although i'm a mint person through and through they're honestly even better than like if you're a fan of that fresh listerine breath Mm -hmm. they're not as intense as that yeah they don't like burn your mouth no no they're really and your soul yeah exactly (laughs) they're great new mints check them out this week we've got a new sexy unique scam coming to us from the honestly cult founders of soul cycle <laughs> og <laughs> cult <laughs> gurus. og scam <laughs> peoplehood which we've reported on in the past mm-hmm. on the holisticism newsletter it is true. which i totally negged this because i thought <laughs> said it's fucking stupid and i hate the website and I will say a year later. <laughs> still hate it. <laughs> yeah, still. Well, jury's not out. Jury's in. Jury hates it. Uh, I'm guilty. Uh, so Peoplehood is the two founders of SoulCycle's new situation that they're they're making. And they sold SoulCycle for $90 million each. They both got $90 million from Equinox. SoulCycle is now, one might say, in the chater. And they're back with Peoplehood um, and they're in startup mode. And Peoplehood is basically, wait, do you know, what do you know about Peoplehood? I don't want to tell you too much. Oh, I know. (laughs) Group therapy? Sort of. (laughs) They're not. Without a therapist. (laughs) Yeah, they're not sure. (laughs) Yeah, it's the idea, like their whole thing with, with SoulCycle obviously was like, having these spiritual gurus instead of like spin instructors. They're like, no, Mm. these are spiritual teachers, Mm. but they weren't. (laughs) They were spin instructors. No offense to soul cycle teachers, but like, it's not like they were going to train to like learn how to coach people. And I don't know, go understand how like therapy works or trauma or emotions. They learn how to teach people how to spin to a beat. And then they're like supposed to put motivational speeches over it. And some people are really amazing at that. And other people are not so amazing at that. (laughs) <laughs> do I have any, any opinions about that? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you have some names in mind? It sounds like you have to like roll out a list. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I feel like you got something back there. <laughs> well, 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 well. <laughs> so I did some reading on this this whole thing. Uh-huh. Not only on their website, which is Horrible. interesting. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. So you can't join anything right now or find discover anything about it other than their newsletter and their Instagram. Yes. Which leave much to be desired, <laughs> other than lots of attempts at questionable memes. And, <laughs> but hey, they're trying. Yeah. So you can't join anything other than the newsletter. You can't participate in these gatherings that they're holding right now, which is essentially their offering that was reported recently in the New York Times in this article. Came out about a week ago. The journalist... Catherine Rosman wrote this piece about them, and I think it's hard to really say exactly what they're doing because they use very vague and heuristic language, mm-hmm. and your 
kind of left to question what is this really? Because they talk about holding group sessions where they stretch, there's music, there's meditation, there's group therapy like discussions. And their promise of what they're offering is a little bit vague. There's something about it that's just so cringe to me. Like PSA, intentional speaking is the new active listening. I'm just like, well, I, I'm sorry, I want to poke my own eyes out. That's, that's, that makes me want to die. Well, it makes me think that it's for like a very specific type of person who's like maybe lived under a rock for the last few years. Right. Who's like, I just discovered Brene Brown. Yeah. <laughs> She's amazing. Yeah. And they're like, have you heard of breathwork? Yeah, yeah. Yo, Shavasana? <laughs> Do you want to go to a yoga class with me? That's how I know you're 10 years behind the wellness trend. If you invite me to go to yoga class, I'm like, oh, you're new. Yeah. You're new to this. We don't do yoga anymore. <laughs> I just, I don't know. There was so, there's so much in their language that I, you guys could afford a PR person. <laughs> you could afford a millennial, maybe even a Gen Z. <laughs> right. Yes. That's the thing. It you know, feels. Like, have a little. So, I mean, who's in the room? was 20 years ago. More yeah. than that. A lot of the quotes from this article and on their website made me think of the, the Pepsi boardroom meeting where they're like, how did, who let that commercial get made? <laughs> And they're all like, nummy, nummy, nummy. <laughs> and six year, six months ago, they were all like, yeah. this is a brilliant Yeah, they're like, this is, this is so the best slam smart. Dunk. They feel out of touch. But basically what peoplehood is, is it's like group therapy. You walk into a room. They have a session that they do. You talk. You, you share. You know, active listening. <laughs> something, something. And it's supposed to make you feel really amazing. And it's supposed to be like a spiritual experience. They keep calling it woo-woo in this article, which I personally have a pet peeve against because yeah. that is first off sort of racist also showing your cards you're trying to enter spiritual communities and still using woo woo it's, it's like, so derogatory mm. they're trying to create this relational fitness situation so they're kind of riding on the coattails of soul cycle with the fitness thing mm. the article is like it's soul cycle without the bike and it's like oh no okay so they've just committed fully to a cult <laughs> <laughs> also in the article they're like have you ever heard of a coach <laughs> we hired a yeah. coach <laughs> No. And we worked with her forever and we learned to communicate. <laughs> like, okay. We're like, good job. Snaps for you. <laughs> Everything. I was like, did I just travel back in time and read something from 2013? Like, what is going on here? That's how, you know, people have money to burn. They're like, we did coaching for however many years. Six and years. now we're starting a company <laughs> based on our experience. But we're not hiring real coaches. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> we're hiring guides. And we put them through a very thorough training process. They attend many days of training and they practice many weeks before they're put in the schedule. Okay. They're not therapists. They're not certified coaches. They are quote unquote guides that you guys train. And there's a really good quote in here from um, a therapist who says, I can't tell you how complex and intricate being a group therapist is. <laughs> like <laughs> Dr. Shapiro is like, I I'm going to hammer this home. Jerry is pissed. <laughs> He's like, these, the, a company that offers group therapy sessions that are not led by mental health professionals would be very scary from a professional standpoint, <laughs> which I'm like, agree. Full, yes. full sense, yes. Jerry. That is correct. Okay. Have you seen the movie Heavyweights with Ben Stiller? Like one of my favorite movies of all time. Absolutely. Okay, good. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of Ben Stiller's character. Like, that's what the training would be like for the guides. They would go to this camp and they would indoctrinate them into their own teaching. <laughs> Lunch has been canceled today due to lack of hustle. Doesn't seem like a good idea. I love the idea of people connecting and talking and that being facilitated. But I think you can't like you can't fake therapy. Sorry. Well, there's a lot of other services like that COA company yeah. who's offering mental health kind of group coaching yeah. stuff but at least i think to my knowledge that is backed by actual psychologists right. and therapists yeah. like registered therapists. yeah that they're like mental fitness i feel like yeah. as well and yeah they're they seem really cool this is the new fitness <laughs> industry mental fitness everyone's just really trying not to have a mental breakdown i mean <laughs> and you gotta work you gotta work for it in this day and age you really have to work for it <laughs> your wellness house of cards it better be <laughs> sturdy Sorry. it's true what i will give to them is that the sentiment of trying to fix disconnection and all of those things are there and that's lovely to okay. create community that's lovely i mean clearly people need like a secular church Totally. Or people need other things to worship than capitalism. So. <laughs> podcast. <laughs> yeah. Podcast. Podcast. <laughs> but I did search. I was 
because they didn't disclose like how much funding. I saw that, and I looked on Crunchbase, and they couldn't. I couldn't find anything. Couldn't find anything. But what I pissed. loved is when you scroll to, or there was something, some feature where you could see like other companies like this. <laughs> One of the other companies that was related to this was free chat rooms for online chat with strangers. <laughs> And it was just chat all of roulette. these, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was all of these chat therapy companies. Uh-huh. So if they manage to keep things IRL, great. But I also think what is creepy about this is how blatantly they're talking about scaling, like so yeah. obviously, which is maybe fine. But it's kind of hard to understand, like, how do you scale human connect, like genuine human connection, like that? And that just feels creepy as does the name peoplehood it's like the skincare company love for all but humans or whatever okay humankind (laughs) it feels pandery Mm -hmm. it feels like a reach who's your favorite ceo my favorite ceo what is her name elizabeth um holmes Holmes, who wears the turtleneck and talks like this people gave that woman money a billion dollars i know so much money she's like give it to me and people did that's so funny this is a sexy unique scam yeah definitely but what would you do to make it not a scam the first thing i would do is i would hire red antler i would get all oh, new yeah. branding because <laughs> they are using like brown paper as the background of their oh, yeah. brand on yeah. instagram <laughs> please stop it's not working babe sorry yeah. we gotta we gotta yeah. fix this up zip zap zap get, yeah. get you a gen z they will make you some cool videos like they should be doing like what jones road is doing on tiktok they need yeah. they like need a branding over rebrand <laughs> and i also just think that they have like this vague idea of what they want to be and it's not good. I don't think they should take any more interviews the founders <laughs> you should go back go back to the hole go back go back to the drawing yeah, board just, guys <laughs> like remain a silent CEO maybe I don't know <laughs> what would you do to fix peoplehood if they if they hired us to fix it oh yeah they're like make us legit no longer a scam no longer a scam mm-hmm. I'd be like fold the company <laughs> start something <So> different dissolved. <laughs> I don't know. It's got a bad taste in my mouth to turn it all around. New name, yeah. new branding, <laughs> new business model <laughs> looks like a new business. Yeah. <laughs> if it, if it, if it looks like a duck and it cracks like a duck. Yeah. <laughs> How about you? Definitely new branding. I would also just be like, okay, this is about connection. Mm. Like, don't make it about people sharing their trauma. Don't make it like group therapy. Yeah. Make it about like meeting friends, yeah. you know, and Activities. connecting with new people and like, Make a dodgeball Dis- league. Yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> discovering a new part of yourself, like revealing yeah. something about yourself that isn't traumatic. Like yeah. just make it fun. Make it easy for people to make friends. Because I think that's 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 hard, right? It's yeah, really hard it is. for like 20 somethings to make new friends, 30 yeah. somethings, so on and so forth. Yeah. Especially in a pandemic era. So I'd would, make it like a club, like yeah. a community co-working situation, but not work. Yeah. Something- Co-play. Yeah, like a like a clubhouse. Yeah, yeah, where you could go do interesting, cool things and meet interesting new people. And I would like take that ninety million dollars they each have, so nearly two hundred million dollars, and be like, okay, go put these in like all the secondary cities and all the tertiary cities. Yeah, don't just put it in New York and LA. No, like, exactly. go make it more equitable. Yeah, if you're gonna call it peoplehood, make it for real people, not just flat iron people. Exactly. <laughs> I think it's in flat iron. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> like you can't even go to a thing right now. Right. It's, it's still like in beta. It's been in beta for like a year and a half. Yeah. Well, good luck to you. <laughs> <laughs> good luck. We s- me- sniffed you out. <laughs> yep. Honestly, that wouldn't take them on as a client. Too mm-hmm. too big of a lift, in my opinion. No. To rebrand. No. But there's your sexy, unique scam. If you want to go sign up for Peoplehood, you can let us know what you think. Com. You yeah. probably won't even look them up, <laughs> or you might, and then you'll laugh. <laughs> yeah. That's a good laugh. For brown paper, especially. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings us to haunted car. Get in, loser. We're going shopping. Okay, what's in your what's in your haunted cart? <laughs> Start with yours because mine's super short. Okay. I have one product, one sexy, not scam product. Okay, this is my wellness house of cards because these are things that I bought and I really liked, really, really, really liked. So my eyelashes are like have been my favorite feature forever, probably because I it's I feel like I have control over it that I can't like get plastic surgery on them. You know, I could get eyelash extensions, but I feel like that's really obvious. It's kind of a flex to have good eyelashes. So uh, and they make me feel beautiful. So I'm like, what if I lose those? Then I'm just gonna look hideous. No. <laughs> so I'm all about <laughs> you do keeping great them lashes. healthy, you know, because mm. you know they've gone through moments. But I'm obsessed with the Heritage Store Castor Oil eyebrow and eyelash growth serum it's just basically like castor oil but it's better than grande lash it's better than latisse in my opinion because latisse gives makes my eyes itchy and it works 
Like my eyebrows are popping. My eyelashes are long and I really like it. It's castor really oil cool. for the win. It truly, truly a miracle product. Yeah. It's like a combo of a couple other things beyond castor mm. oil, but it's really good. Okay. The second thing that I'm obsessed with are my Merrill <laughs> Hydro Crocs. In fact, I'm oh, wearing yes. them right now. Hey. <laughs> and, okay. I wanted these because I saw my friend Maceo wearing them in blue. And I was mm. like, those look so cool. Maceo is cool. I want those. And then I was like, but why? Are they part of my brand? Are they like, <laughs> what would I wear, would I wear um, them? On the street where... Exactly. checks out yes i'm like streetwear cozy is what i've decided <laughs> like like i have heels and i like heels but i'm not going like full selling sunset on the regular you know like you live in on the east side of LA. and i wear a size 10 and a half shoe and i have arthritis so mm-hmm. i need a comfy cozy look but i also a loafer be fashionable you know Fash. exactly i feel like my true essence is like amish homeschool dress mm. with a sort of edgy twist because i am from new york so well, lived in New York for a really long time. So these are my most comfortable shoe. They're sort of like streetwear. That's what the bros are wearing. And I love them. Also, people wear them hiking. I'm really impressed. Well, they're so comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they contain multitudes. <laughs> I can't them enough. And uh, they yeah. They usurped the croc business pretty swiftly. Honestly, they did. Yeah. They're like a more fashionable version of crocs. And they're like the Yeezy crocs, but not as expensive. Mm, there you go. And finally, I'm 33. I'm aging. Filters are telling me I'm supposed to have flawless skin, but I'm also not supposed to look plastic and I'm not supposed to be getting Botox and I'm not supposed to get fillers, but I'm not supposed to age. And you have to be a boss <laughs> and a mom and <laughs> and a person and just like, you better be happy and hot, have but it all. also not think about my looks too much. It's exhausting. <laughs> Read a lot of books, but <laughs> <don't>. it's, <laughs> it's, it's a lot. <laughs> so I have two things that I'm trying for my skin because I feel like my skin is aging, but I've been trying retinol and it made me break out so much that I was like, I cannot do this. <laughs> no. And putting this away. But the two things that have really been working are this Allies of Skin Mandelic Pigmentation Corrector Night Serum. I'm obsessed with it. Like, it mm. worked almost overnight to, like, get rid of a bunch of my hyperpigmentation. <gasps> I'm obsessed. And it's, like, clean, quote unquote. And then this Bakuchi Oil Peptide Serum, which you can wear in the day and the night. And I have been getting so many compliments on my skin. It does so, look great. Oh, thank you. So I feel like it's working. And I really like it. And I, st- I tried using the frownies. Oh, the frownies. We're going to have to talk about those another day. Uh, to Stay tuned. <laughs> it's a story, man. But actually, maybe I'll talk about them next week. And I'll talk about the Talika eye pads that are like my saving grace. I'm obsessed with them. Maybe we'll talk about Botox we'll talk next about week. It. Let's talk about it next week because then I think I have a code for the Talika Oh, eyes. I thought you were going to be like, I have a code for Botox. <laughs> oh my God, I wish. It's like a code for general Botox. <laughs> <laughs> What's on your wellness house of cards this week? Well, no longer haunting my cart because the lovely people at Tripolar sent us one Ooh-hoo. to try. Shout out to the Tripolar team. You guys are amazing. Thank you. Is a, I realize this is very fitting. I still don't understand most of skincare, but I'm now really understanding all the tech. <laughs> <laughs> I was thrifting with a friend this weekend on our little road trip. And I, she was like, you always go to the tech section. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Duh, you don't. I got a. $350 coffee maker for $60. <gasps> the Mocha Master. Have you heard of this? Yes. Yeah. And that it's, sounds amazing. it's brand new. And then I also got this cool like old slide projector thing. Anyways, I, I love the tech section. I feel you with that. That's <laughs> Yeah. So I'm in the tech section of skincare now <laughs> and I'm learning all about radio frequency and ELV. What's ELV? ELV is basically microcurrent okay. and radio frequency is basically heat. Oh, oh, okay. I didn't know uh-huh. that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it does, like Got it. on the skin. And so we have been gifted a lovely or two lovely devices. Sorry, one went to me. <laughs> <laughs> she had to try it. <laughs> yeah. And one is now going to be a prize for you, lovely listeners. And this device. I think is better than the new face. I'm That's convinced. a bold claim, dude. I know. I like the new face, but this one has, so it has not only the microcurrent, but it also has radio frequency. So it has the heat factor and I'm having a lot of skin issues right now. And I'm Your convinced, well, I'm convinced that the radio frequency especially is going to help with it because yeah. essentially what it's doing is it's causing like little trauma to, I think it's like the third layer uh-huh. of your dermis so that it boosts collagen production. Mm-hmm. And what the microcurrent does is stimulates your muscles. So that helps with toning as we know. So it's a little workout for your face, like in a infrared sauna is the way I think about it. 
and it feels really good. That's why I like all of these things because I find them so relaxing. Yeah. And I'm now convinced you use this one every other day as opposed to five days a week or every day on with the new face. Yeah. And I like that having that break, yep. the microcurrent is way stronger. I can't even do the highest setting because wow. the low setting is so strong. That sounds amazing. So some people wouldn't like that. But oh, I love that. I love it. <laughs> so it's not haunting my cart anymore, but it is in my... It's in your house of cards. Yeah, because now it's in my routine. And dear listener, you can win one. It's super yes. easy. All you have to do is add yourself to our giveaway list. Yes. We'll put the link in the show notes mm-hmm. and it's like a $650 product. Yeah. So the <laughs> one we're giving away is actually even better than the one that I have. <laughs> so look out for that. Yeah. We'll put the link in the show notes, but if you want to win, we're going to give you a couple weeks to enter and then we'll announce our winner and, and we'll, we'll give our sort of sub winners, our runners up a couple prizes too. So don't worry. We got it's you. It's very high likelihood that you'll win something. <laughs> we have stuff for you. So don't forget to review the pod. She's so good to